Hi everybody, my name's Natasha and I'm a MyProtein PT. And in this video with you today, I'm talking about warming up, cooling down, and how stretching comes into play. So exercise is a physiological stress. We can think about our normal baseline, heart rate, breathing rate, temperature. As we exercise, we have a greater demand for these factors. And so I can kind of think about this as a bit of a bell curve, our intensity being right at the top of that bell curve and the warming up gradually allowing us to get to the intensity and cooling down, allowing us to get back to our baseline. So let's take you on a little bit of a journey. When you're trying to exercise, your muscles are moving and in order for your muscles to perform, they need oxygen. In order for us to get oxygen, your heart rate needs to pump. And in order for us to meet the demand for that oxygen, your breathing rate goes up. Now, not only that, but as we exercise, we are gonna have changes to our metabolic rate. We need glycogen stores in order to generate energy for muscles. So as you exercise, your hormones will adjust in order for us to respond to that physiological demand. So why does warming up and cooling down benefit us and how do we do it? Okay, I hear you. There are two differences here. So we've got physiological benefits, but we've also got psychological benefits. So as you warm up, your body temperature is gonna rise. Now this is quite important because a warm muscle is a more productive muscle. Why? Because it's able to intake some more oxygen. We're able to work across our full range of motion and we actually get a lot of contractile function benefits from this. The gradual introduction into a physiological stress state, i.e. your exercise, is quite important. By gradually building up heart rate, actually we're able to divert more oxygen to our muscles and these are the structures that are in demand. Now, do you think that's gonna help you in your workout? So I also mentioned psychological impact. So we're talking about your mental preparation, you being aware of what your body is doing and your state of mind as you're exercising. Preparing for exercise is actually really beneficial in helping us to manage stress, but more importantly, on neurological connections. Now, I'm sure you've heard about the mind-muscle connection. Right? When we perform our warm up, we're actually helping to stimulate those neurological connections between mind and muscle. Now let's elaborate more on this. A strong connection is going to allow us to have a greater output from those muscles when we're at our peak point of our training. Okay, so there's a lot of talk about how warm ups can help prevent injury. Now, the scientific evidence is slightly varied, but if your body's warm, if your muscles are warm, and if your mind is in that ready state, you are going to have a positive impact on prevention of injury. When we're talking about warm-ups, stretching comes into play. And there's, again, a lot of different talk about dynamic stretching, static stretching. Dynamic stretches directly relate to all of those physiological parameters that we spoke about before. So the increase in heart rate, et cetera, et cetera. However, as you are performing these movements, you're also increasing the length of that muscle across its full range of movement. For me, I like to do specific warm-ups. So for example, if I'm going into the gym and I'm doing a deadlift session, my best warm-up is deadlifts, you got it. But the difference is I'm not gonna start off on my max weight. I'm gonna gradually build up lower weights nice and controlled reps. I'm really, really trying to build up that muscle-mind connection that I spoke about earlier. Another thing that I like to add in is mobility exercises. So stretching and mobility, two key terms when we're talking about warm-ups. Stretching is referring to flexibility, so the length of that muscle. Whereas mobility, we're talking about joint range of motion. I personally absolutely like to build in mobility into my warm-ups. So the benefits of mobility is increasing muscle activation across our full joint range. And then cool downs. Okay, so when we talk about cool downs, we're talking about relaxation and repair. Cool downs can be both active or passive. A passive, a static stretch can be quite beneficial here. The reason being is we're trying to maintain muscle length. Active cool downs are things like maybe walking on a treadmill after you've finished training and just gradually bringing that heart rate down, but you're still moving your muscles. Now, there are actually some scientific benefits of this. So active cool downs have actually been shown to accelerate removal of lactose from the blood, although this is not actually directly from the muscle tissue itself. Performing active cool downs may partially prevent immune system depression whilst also promoting recovery of your cardiovascular system. 
In actual fact, the process of an active cool down has shown to maintain endorphin levels, actually helping you give that feeling of joy. So to sum up for everybody, warm ups and cool downs, quite important, offering us physiological and psychological benefits. So gradually get into that challenging peak of exercise should be a gradual process. Aim to increase mobility, okay? So remember those dynamic stretches and the importance of those in your warm up. Remember that warm ups can be general or they can be specific. Remember when you're doing your exercise, think about those connections. Develop those neural pathways that you will be using at a higher intensity within your program. And when we talk about cool downs, you're wanting to gradually return to baseline, keep those endorphin levels high. And the other thing about your cool down is it gives you a chance to reflect on your workout. What have you achieved? What can you do better? How can you prepare yourself for next time? So I've been Natasha, thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. And before you go, please remember to like and subscribe to the My Protein channel.